There are few warm and fuzzy holiday feelings being passed around the Republican presidential field tonight. In fact, two senators are doing everything they can to spoil Thanksgiving for each other. Senior political correspondent Mike Emanuel has tonight's campaign wrap-up. In Mount Pleasant, South Carolina, the feud between Senators Marco Rubio of Florida and Ted Cruz of Texas was on full display, with Rubio taking this swipe against Cruz for his vote against NSA surveillance. God forbid tomorrow morning there is a terrorist attack in the United States. The first question everyone's going to have is why didn't we know about it and why didn't we stop it? Some in our own party who have taken away tools that we need to find these killers before they find us. There's also this ad that 501c4 American Encore is spending $200,000 in Iowa to air against Cruz. Our leaders must keep America safe. But when Ted Cruz had the chance to fight Barack Obama's dangerously weak anti-terror policies, he didn't. Instead, Cruz voted to weaken America's ability to identify and hunt down terrorists. Cruz Communications Director Rick Tyler says the establishment is in full panic mode after not getting Jeb Bush, now settling on his protege, Marco Rubio. Last night on the Kelly file, Cruz didn't defend his vote. Instead, he punched back at Rubio on immigration. They want to try to change the topic because I think Marco's campaign is determined that his longtime support of Chuck Schumer and, and, and Barack Obama's amnesty plan, particularly making it easier to bring Syrian Muslim refugees into this country, that, that's, that they're now worried about it politically, so they want to change it with a false attack ad. The latest Fox News national poll of Republican primary voters out Sunday revealed both Cruz and Rubio climbing as Dr. Ben Carson is dropping, which likely explains the sharper jabs between the two senators. Meanwhile, a new Quinnipiac poll out of Iowa reveals the Democrat race is essentially frozen. Frontrunner Hillary Clinton maintains 51 percent support of likely Democratic caucus participants. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders has inched up to 42 percent, while former Maryland Governor Martin O'Malley is a distant third in in single digits. In Colorado last night, Clinton spoke again about defeating ISIS. We need to defeat them and destroy them, and we need to fight them in the air and fight them on ground and fight them online. And we can do that by bringing together a coalition of other countries and people who share our belief. The economy and jobs are key issues in that Quinnipiac survey of likely Democratic participants. The one area where Sanders leads Clinton by five points. 47% of those surveyed say he would be best to handle the economy. Doug? Mike Emanuel here in the Bureau tonight. Thank you, Mike.